So I'm here today to talk about updating the superficial deposit thickness model, so challenges and the future, and also how this may apply to the future of digital mapping in BGS. So first I'm going to talk about what a superficial deposit is and what the superficial deposit thickness model is. The previous workflow and why it's a challenge to then release a new superficial deposit thickness model on a regular basis. A new data processing pipeline, which is remarkably similar to the old one, but with a lot of new technology. Um, and then the potential future of the SDTM and our remaining challenges. So firstly, what is a superficial deposit? And for this, I'm going to read off my notes because I'm not a geologist and I keep slightly <coughs> fudging the terms. So a superficial deposit, which was previously known as drift, so you might also see in BGS the superficial drift thickness model mentioned in some literature, are the youngest geological deposits formed during the most recent period of geological time, and they rest on bedrock where they were laid down by various natural processes such as by actions by ice, water and wind. And here you can see superficial deposits in a buried valley, which we will come back to later. The, basically a glacier has formed a valley and it's then filled up with sediment over time. And a buried valley is actually quite important for the superficial deposit modelling that we'll see later on. So most of these superficial deposits are unconsolidated sediments, such as gravel, sand, silts and clays. And onshore, they usually form a relatively thin, often discontinuous in patches or larger spreads. Almost all of these deposits have been formally classified on the basis of origin, so you might see them as glacial deposits, river terrace deposits or blown sand, or on the compositions such as peat in some other BGS products. And the superficial deposit thickness model takes data from boreholes and uses mathematical techniques to produce a map of the UK superficial deposit thickness at various resolutions. So the previous SDTM used the following process. We generally collected the data from various BGS data sets, so mostly the SOBI borehole index that was mentioned earlier. Um, it's quite hard to keep track of this data between releases, or this was the case a few years ago due to technological limitations. And then there was a manual GIS process to model using a natural nearest neighbours um, algorithm per quarter sheet. So the date UK was split into a number of quarter sheets, and then for each quarter sheet there was a natural nearest neighbour model used to produce a superficial deposit model for one particular region. And then all of these quarter sheets had to be combined to produce one map for the UK, which was quite tricky as each boundary required manual checking by geologists and it delayed the model compilation and publishing. Additionally, there's no uncertainty in the output product. So at the moment, the output product will say things like the superficial deposit is 20 metres deep. And if a civil engineer uses that, and there aren't that many points nearby, it may not be as accurate as they're expecting. So we are aiming to address these challenges in the next version of the superficial deposit thickness model, which we're working on at the moment. So the new data processing pipeline, which is very much a work in progress and not final, will be semi-automated and will still include feedback from geologists at all stages. So the initial um, data preparation now includes a database which includes version control and data flags so that we know why we have used the data and which model it was used in. In particular, there's a separate quality assurance section now where we'll put in geological checks, so making sure, for example, we don't have a 10 meter super or a borehole saying that it's 10 meters deep when it's over a region that we know is to be rocker surface, for example where perhaps the borehole location has been misrecorded. Um, these Python scripts can be triggered whenever new data is added to the database or on an annual or biannual basis. And then we've got new machine learning techniques that we're using to model the entirety of the UK in one go, rather than per quarter sheet, which I'll go over soon. And then at that stage, geologists will review the prototype model and look for issues that the machine learning model has produced for then going to other geologists to check a final product, which will hopefully include uncertainty. And then we are from there, because the process is now semi-automated, when we receive new data, for example, in the AGS borehole data set, it can hopefully be integrated into a new product far faster because we can run this life cycle again. So for the quality assurance, I received a 
list of 400,000 boreholes from the geologists at BGS. So some of these were immediately rejected at source, particularly for boreholes around coastline regions. Um, others have been rejected for another reason, perhaps because the borehole is known to have been located in the wrong place, so it's immediately been rejected, or for reasons in the notes of when it, the borehole data was being collected. So for now, we have accepted around 300,000 records, which are in the blue and very light green on the map on the, right, on the left. Um, but there are still regions where there are very sparse data points, for example, in the highlands of Scotland and some parts of the southwest and indeed parts of Wales. But we have used some new rules in this quality assurance step to try and accept more boreholes to allow them to be modelled. So using a new Hidden Valley product from BGS, we have said that if a borehole is deeper than 30 metres, and there is hidden valleys, it can now be accepted into the data set, whereas previously it may have been rejected until it was then checked by a geologist and incorporated into the model. So with the 300,000 data points we now have, we look at ways of modelling superficial deposit across the UK. And this is the result from a current very prototype model, where we trained it on the Eastings and Northings, the elevation, a DTM, uh, one hot encoded quaternary domain information and the distance to the next nearest borehole. One hot encoded quaternary domain is just basically a yes or no answer as to what type of rock um, the borehole was located on. So if you had, for example, three columns and it said igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary to be very, very basic. If it was located on a sedimentary rock, then there would be a one in that particular column and zeros elsewhere. And our target variable was to model the rockhead borehole depths only. Our BGS do have other depths, terminal depths available. For now, we've just used rockhead, where we've got confirmed rockhead from a borehole. And we used a quantile gradient boosted tree to produce both the map you see here on your left um, and also an uncertainty map, which is not yet completed. Now, looking at the map, there are some immediately fairly large problems, one of which is the depth is not as great as we would expect, particularly in Norfolk, where there are a lot of buried valley regions, which you'll see on the next slide. But also, we have a lot of banding present in the map. And this is wherever we have a DTM boundary, because it is still divided by quarter sheets. And we're aiming to change the DTM we're use, using to another BGS-derived product um, in October. So one of the largest remaining challenges we have is that the current prototype model is very heavily underestimating the superficial deposit thickness, particularly in Norfolk or where, anywhere else where there's a buried valley. So we need to begin by masking these areas so that we can try, train the model to effectively allow itself to go deeper. It's currently ver underestimating very heavily in these regions. And in more mountainous areas, such as Snowdonia, it's tending to overestimate because there's no constraint on the thickness in mountainous regions. So we are incorporating further geological rules to retrain the model on that. We're trying to remove subjective rules in the exclusion of data sets, such as estimates for older records. At the moment, we've tended to assume that if the first 50 boreholes within a quarter sheet are generally older records and may not be more, or may not be as reliable due to older measurement techniques. And this isn't always true. So we're trying to think of a way of more effectively identifying what is a good borehole record using quantitative rules rather than qualitative. Um, removing the banding, as I've mentioned, by changing the DTM and also improving the uncertainty and how to present uncertainty, especially in low borehole density regions. So one potential option for this is instead of presenting a specific value, say 28 meters, we may present a range of values on a map saying this is between 25 to 30 meter depth and not give a specific value. The alternative is we keep with using specific values for regions, but then provide an uncertainty map to go alongside the superficial deposit thickness map model. So to summarise, there have been previous issues, mostly due to technological limitations with the previous superficial deposit thickness model, it being hard to update, 
mostly manual process and it was difficult to track why certain data decisions had been made and which boreholes to use in the model. So we've come up with a solution that's in progress for semi-automated data preparation, quality assurance and modelling and then maintaining input from geologists at each stage and quantified rules around data preparation and quality assurance. The remaining issues are quantitatively identifying less reliable SOBI records. The model has a very obvious lack of depth deposit, depth of deposit especially in Hidden Valley regions and there are banding within the model and also how to present model uncertainty. And of course I haven't done this on my own. We've also had support from Chris Williams, Russell Lawley, Rob Shaw, Sophie Taylor, Tim Kiersey, Katie Whitbread and Roman Roth, as well as all of the previous BGS geologists and mappers who have worked on the SDTM over the years.